Hey Club Scrappers, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap and this is your workshop for the Geodes page kit. So hopefully by now you have your beautiful page kit. I've got a copy of the um, printed instructions. These are available online. And I also have my 12 inch Fiskars trimmer and the accordion pocket file organizer. As I always say, if you don't yet have um, the knowledge or ability or materials you need to make your own accordion organizer, please reach out to us at clubscrap.com, info at clubscrap.com, and we'll make sure you have what you need to get started with that. It's just a wonderful organizational tool uh, to use with our efficient uh, system of scrapbooking. So with the uh, kits, what I typically do is just set aside all the embellishments. We have this wonderful uh, silver metallic pen, all the gorgeous ribbons. We have some fun, just little decorative charms, as well as a sheet of the gold thin line, or sorry, silver thin line dazzles. Honestly, these don't look like a whole lot of spectacularness on the sheet, but when we use them on our pages, they really look cool. And um, then let's begin with the set of 12 pre-cut photo mats, and we'll figure out what pages these need to go on. And with the accordion pocket file, every pocket represents one double page spread. So let's go ahead and find the three black pre-cut photo mats. We'll file them in pocket one and two. And then also one purple photo mat for pocket one and two. Next, let's find the other two purple mats and we'll file those in pocket three and four. Finally, let's take the three teal photo mats. Those will go in pocket five and six. And the three blue photo mats end up in pocket seven and eight. Okay, then the very next part of our routine here is to locate the papers we'll be trimming, plus put everything in this entire set in order that we're going to be using it. So the first piece we will be trimming is going to be this teal plane. It's just a really gorgeous color. Just grab one sheet of that. It was really hard to decide what to name the other beautiful papers in this collection because they both kind of have the same... It, it's just really hard to describe. So we chose to call this one purple and this one teal because it has this larger section of teal on it and just this one differentiating factor. So we'll find the one that's primarily purple but it does have the teal uh, crystals on this one edge. But this will be the next one. Just take one of those. And then take one of the other one. This is the one we're calling teal, and it has the purple crystals here inside. Okay, then in your kit, you're going to find a very special sheet of paper. It is um, a shiny uh, metallic black plain sheet. This is so, so pretty. Next, we're going to locate our cut aparts because that'll be the next thing to trim. So on this sheet, it has life is a balance of holding on and letting go. And we'll put that face down on the pile as I did with the other prints that we found as well. And then the remaining sheet of cut aparts, this is all primarily um, border strips. We'll put that face down. We'll still continue to sort the rest of the papers in our stash. So next, find two purple planes, two of them, then two blue planes, gets easier and easier as we have fewer papers to sort, then one of the teal prints, and again that's this one, face down, one a black metallic plane, a teal plane, and the remaining purple print. So that should be everything in your stack. Flip the whole works over so that beautiful teal is on the top. Then I'm gonna to turn to page two of my instructions and we'll work through each sheet that we see here. And um, I noticed there is one that gets trimmed and used with a cutting mat and craft knife. You could also do this with scissors, but I'll probably do the trimming first and then save this uh, other um, cut for when we uh, fin are finished with our trimmer. So with the teal plane, we'll just open her up and we'll get going here. We're going to make a bunch of cuts at large numbers resulting in small pieces. So our first cut's at 11 and 3 quarters, and then 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter, 9 and 3 quarters, and 6. All right, rotate the six by 12. We'll cut horizontally at eight and four 
All right, to stack up these rectangles, and they all go in pocket three and four. Okay, next we're gonna make a series of squares out of this three and three quarter by 12 strips. So trim at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up these three squares and place them in pocket one and two. And finally, we have a small scrap, which I'll set aside. And then this wider piece goes in pocket five and six. And the three little guys all go in three and four. And if you're wondering where in the world are you getting all these numbers, you can see them on each piece that we've trimmed once you've followed the written instructions on the, on the diagram here. So this is, if you get lost or want to look up another piece of paper, you can find all the numbers right here. Okay, now this purple print, let's place it in the trimmer so that the crystals are on the left. We'll start at nine and a half and then five and a half nice and easy okay the this piece that we just created we'll put that in pocket seven and eight and I do that at an angle so I can still see um, the numbers on the left side of my folio here then the middle section of the print that we trimmed goes in one and two and then this other uh, piece goes in seven and eight okay now we're gonna take this two print teal not steel <laughs> teal print and we'll place it in the trimmer so that the crystals are on the left and we're going to cut it so uh, let's see ten and a half ten and a half inches all right so this pretty teal strip then goes in pocket three and four i'm going to set this aside for now and we'll finish the work on this as soon as we're done with our trimmer okay then the metallic black plane goes in next we'll cut at 11 10, eight and three quarters, and five. All right, rotate this five inch piece. We'll cut at nine and three quarters, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Okay. These two rectangles that we just trimmed that are the same, seven and eight. And then you have these narrow strips. We'll stack them neatly together. There should be two of them. We'll cut them in half horizontally at two and a half. Then take three of the rectangles we just made, one and two, the other one in three and four. Now this next strip, this is three and three quarter by 12. First cut is at ten and three quarters, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. Okay, so this first rectangle we just ended with, one and two. The next one, seven and eight. Now the next two in your pile are different in size. That's intentional, but they both go in pocket five and six. And my lord, we got a scrap. <laughs> okay, then we have a couple of strips here. We got one wider and then two of the same. These are both one inch. So take one wide and one one inch piece. And they both go in seven and eight. Then take the other remaining piece that goes in one and two. Moving on to the cut aparts, we'll place these in the trimmer so that the black strip is on the right. And um, I just just a word for the future. After discussing this with my team at a meeting today, actually, um, I decided I'm going to try eliminating the registration marks that we normally print so that they don't mar the look of the art. And I'm going to provide you with the written and spoken instructions of exactly the measurements to trim on. So we don't have to worry about being so accurate with our cuts. So let's just place this in the trimmer with this border strip on the right. Life is a balance and line that up, line those registration marks up with the edge of the blade and your measurement will be at around 11 inches. Slide down and cut at eight and a half. Next, slide to four and a quarter. All right, rotate. And if you have the A gates on your left, your cut will be at five and three quarters. 
Okay, so there's a lot of beauty and ordinary things. That will be filed in pocket one and two. And then if you want, you can take scissors and separate, just do a rough cut. It doesn't have to be the accurate one for now, but it can be, just pause me. And if you trim out just along the edges of these really easy shapes, um, you'll be ready to go. But let's see, this largest one with the teal innards goes in one and two. And then this purpley one like this goes in three and four. This really crystally purple one, seven and eight, and then this other sort of egg-shaped one goes in five and six. Okay, let's get the rest of these trimmed up. Now I'm going to have you put this next piece in the trimmer so that nothing can dim the light is on the right, and we'll cut it five. Now rotate so that this tag shape is on the right, and we'll cut at two and a quarter. Then we'll rotate again so that you are beautiful is on the right, cut at three and a half. Okay, so what that did was just allow us to just make rotations and cuts, rotations and cuts without having to pick anything up. Um, and here we go, filing this piece in pocket five and six. And this little gecko y guy, one and two. The journaling prompt, three and four. This larger tag, five and six. Okay, now we have another section. I always trim the smallest piece off the end first. So it's going to be at around ten and a half. And I'm going to do a little neaten up cut here because my registration marks just weren't quite as neat as they could have been. Okay, I think these all get trimmed equally, so it doesn't really matter which way it's in your trimmer here. We'll go at seven and three and a half. So this journaling prompt with the horizontal lines and then this little gecko in the corner that goes in five and six. Then the vertical journaling prompt, one and two. This vertical journaling prompt, seven and eight. Keep it real. That goes to three and four. I just love the sentiments in this collection. I think it's really appropriate for 2020 in a lot of cases. Okay, this uh, black strip goes in three and four. All right, here we go. Uh, you are a rainbow needs to be on your right of this next sheet. And we're once again going to trim at 11. And nine and a half. Eight. Seven and a quarter. Six and a half. Five and a quarter. And four. I'll just rotate so that this black tag is on the left and trim at seven and three quarters. Okay, this guy goes in seven and eight. I'm sorry. This guy goes in pocket three and four, and this tag, seven and eight. The little geckos, one and two. This purple strip with the quote, five and six. Dear Universe, one and two. The mini tiles, seven and eight. Pick up all the rest of these. You have some uh, larger tiles, seven and eight. Some more geckos, three and four. And this final black strip, seven and eight. All right, I'm gonna pull my trimmer away and grab my club scrap cutting mat and a craft knife. All right, so here is the remaining piece and on the diagram, it just shows a cut that is occurring on this left side and part in the color, right? I had to desaturate it a little bit so you could see the lines more clearly on the darker paper. But basically you can just pick any line. It doesn't have to be the line that I chose. Um, I just went where it contrasts into the purple and I just kept the metallic. You know, it, really it's totally up to you. The important thing is just that you feel comfortable using your craft knife and if not, use scissors. So I will just run it along in a real free motion, bringing the blade toward me while holding down on my non-dominant hand here. And my left hand is stabilizing everything. And then I'll just get so I'm comfortable here. Go along those printed lines. It's pretty forgiving actually, which is nice. 
Again, if you don't like to use a, a pen knife, and I know a lot of you don't, um, just keep practicing though. Let me encourage you, just don't give up on it. You can increase your skill just by simply doing it often, which, you know, if you hang around here long enough, you will. These two pieces end up in pocket five and six, so I'll just stash those in there for now. And that concludes all the prep work, and now all we have to do is the dry fit assembly. For those of you who are new, you should have a remaining stack of paper. And what I always encourage people to do during this uh, slide and stack process is to take the entire stack of paper, not just one sheet, but all of it, and put it to the left of the center of your workspace and then slide the top sheet over. And then you will have in front of you everything you need for the base of layouts seven and eight. So we're going to basically work our way backwards through the instructions. So here we are on page four, layout seven and eight. The base of each of these pages is purple. And when we sorted our paper earlier, that was how we made that happen. Next, I'm going to take everything out of the pocket labeled seven and eight. And it's tempting sometimes to grab pocket one and two. I've done it and wondered what is going on. Nothing makes any sense. But we are working from back to front so that when we finish with this phase of work, we're ready to adhere things down, lay out one through one through eight. Okay, so this larger piece here goes flush on the bottom right edge of our layout. And then this goes on the top. And you can rotate it however you like. It's completely... Uh, your choice. Okay, then we have this metallic black strip to help separate our space. And then we have our fun little title here. Across the bottom, we'll add this large tile strip. We'll kind of do the same thing. So we'll reflect what happened here over on this side with our little metallic black strip. Above this, we can add a photo mat and a tag. I'll tell you more about how to attach the tag in a minute. And then over here, we can add our vertical mats. They should fit in perfectly. In this lower right corner, I'll add the two vertical metallic black mats. And then um, we have a journaling prompt that should nest with the other black piece here. And once you fussy cut this, it can tuck right behind this object. And you can also add one of these really beautiful, I just think they're so pretty, um, just subtle, classy, like the rest of the kit. <laughs> um, that can be topped with some wax linen thread or black thread just to draw the attention to it. And that can be placed in this spot. So let's talk about finishing touches. On that last page, I did a couple of extra things. So first I put this on my cutting mat and I used a grid ruler to remove the triangular shapes from the corner to create the tag. Then I took a crocodile a punch on the largest hole, or you could use any quarter inch hole punch to punch a hole in the tag. Then take the teal, I love this ribbon, <laughs> I love the way it sounds, teal taffeta ribbon, and just simply thread it onto the tag, but don't tie a knot, just thread enough so that the ribbon can wrap around to the back of the layout. And that way um, you avoid having a large lump on your page from the ribbon and just adhere the ends to the back split them a little bit it looks so nice after i attached all of this i left a little space to add and i hope you can see this one of the dazzles strips it's just so classy and subtle so what you can do is um just find the strip that you want to attach i think it was this one here and what i found works really well is just using tweezers just grab that strip with the tweezers pull it up and then there you can see it separating out and just looks so pretty um, and it will take two strips to go all the way across the entire 12 inch space and it's no problem in, in fact the seam between the two strips was covered later I thought mm, I could probably done this with one strip and then use the rest of it over here once I know where my tag would be attached finally attach this with our foam adhesive circles my favorite for just adding a nice little amount of dimension to the layout and just kind of bringing that tag into the foreground a little bit more okay then on layout seven finishing touches here I've got um, this beautiful metallic this is called like a pearl ribbon silver pearl and um like p-u-r-l actually is is the correct spelling of that and just adds such a nice splash here too right on the black metallic border i added those thin line dazzles and looks almost like a like a chain like you could wear <laughs> it's really really pretty and here with the fussy cut agate behind this. This is mounted with foam adhesive circles and finally the uh, wax linen thread topped 
charm. Now, if you're looking for wax linen thread in your kit, it's not there. This is an optional listing on your kit supplies. It's not required, but if you have it, just go ahead and add a little something to that. It kind of perks up a little bit. Okay, so with this layout sort of marked out, we will slide only that purple piece of paper that started out as the base for layout seven. We're going to slide that and stack it on top of eight. Then take the very next sheet, which is one blue, and slide it to the right. Grab everything out of pocket five and six. Now we're working our way backwards. And I'm just consulting my instructions now. I'm at the top of page four. And I get to add these beautiful pieces. So I'm going to flush right on this. Flush left on that. It creates this really cool opening, kind of like an agate. <laughs> then I'll run this teal border vertically along the left edge and nest it with the quote. To the right of that, we can add two horizontal teal mats. And if you want, you could tuck the mats behind. That would kind of, I think that might have been my original intent, but I got all excited. <laughs> Glued everything down. You have a vertical teal a nester for your journaling prompt. And look, I even have a nester for this little guy. He goes on the left. Um, you can tuck this fussy cut piece behind the mat, clip off the corners, and staple some ribbons to the tag before you attach it on this side. Now, I, I know there aren't many pictures on here. I honestly just <laughs> didn't have the heart to cover up these beautiful prints with anything. Please tell me you understand what I'm talking about. But let me tell you this. If you have more pictures you want to add to this page, of course, by all means, just put them on there. So you have one, two, three. You could definitely add pictures over this, this, and this if you wanted to. And of course, anywhere else you want. You could move the journaling prompt to another spot and add an unmatted photo here. You know, this is your own page. It doesn't really matter whether or not you follow this to the letter. Of course it doesn't. Okay, so finish-wise, I stapled some folded satin ribbon. And there are two full yards of this gorgeous 7 8 inch double-faced satin. Um, oh, it just is so luxurious and beautiful. And I could use it generously because there's so much of it included. So just staple that on to the top end. If you don't like the look of a staple, just tape it on from the back side and it will look beautiful. And then here you can add more of the thin line dazzles and then a wax linen topped charm if you have the wax linen. On the left, I did my new favorite bow style, which is just the double looped bow. So basically I did a full length folded it in half. I wanted my, my knot to form here. So at this length is doubled and then taped to the side. And then I just thread a smaller piece through the loop, bring it around to the side, pull it to kind of create this little tuck. And there's no knot again in the ribbon. Look carefully along this. This is the white area of the cut apart. And I added uh, lengths of the thin line dazzles on the left and right side of that. Again, using a tweezers with that really just expedites the process. It can be a real quick little addition to your layout, keeping that totally classy look going. Okay, I'm going to do the stack and slides, or slide and stack, I guess. So let's bring this blue page over, and then slide this to the right, and I'll turn to page three of my instructions, looking at the bottom image, and looks like it, this piece gets rotated so that the purple crystals are on your right, and then on the left you should have the black metallic. Everything out of pocket three and Four. Make sure you get those little guys. Okay, so this is moving along so quickly. I love how this collection came together. So here's this beautiful, um, this was a portion of the teal, which is also here. And I like to do that. I like to bring some of that print over to the other side to make it all uh, work together. Down on the low end, I've got this gecko border happening. Up here we have this black um, title strip. And you can top that on each side with a uh, quarter inch teal, same over here. I did add a thin line dazzle to each one of those quarter inch strips before attaching it to the layout, or you can do it after as well, works fine. Um, how about some horizontal purple? And then we have three teal mats in this kit. So two of them I'm gonna put in the upper left corner of the right side, the other one vertically down over here. Um, on this, there's a curve shape on the tag. So I used scissors to just freehand, freestyle, <laughs> total freestyle, this tag. And that's going to go on the left here. And it overlaps this a little bit so we have more visual on the ribbon. 
Um, here we have another tag, did the same exact thing, punched the hole. I guess this has to come up a little. This goes down here. Um, the agate can tuck behind this little black rectangle and the keep it real goes here along with one of the charms with topped with wax linen. Um, I'll show you some assembly tips here now with this guy. Oh, there's another charm as well. Sorry. And that we have five of them to work with. So here we go. The, the detailed cut looks so nice. And again, it just took me a few seconds to trim those out here. It, we have some pretty thin line dazzles. And again, I could have gotten away with one piece. I didn't know I was going to put the tag here at the time, but you do, you have uh, the benefit of hindsight. Um, here we have this gorgeous ribbon, same trick, just punch the hole, thread it through. Don't tie a knot wrap around to the back. And then we repeat that on the left side. So we kind of can keep that transfer, that look going. Plus then I stapled two pieces of the silver pearl ribbon, popped it with some foam adhesive circles and added my charm, not even a bow here. I think I was running low on my pre-cut wax linen. So all I had enough was to just tie it onto the top. And I like how it just brings the eye. Look at above and below um, the gorgeous thin line dazzles added. You know, the dazzle is something that just doesn't dazzle me on the on the main sheet, but when you get it on a project, they're just always so beautiful. Okay, so slide and stack. Bring the teal up to the top. This piece, I think I had it so the crystals were on the left. And I'll empty everything and pocket one and two. Moving right along, right? Okay, so here we have our print carrying it over right this is what this is what we do there should be those three squares i'm going to start up with those across the top edge here use your grid ruler to help attach them evenly spaced evenly i always adhere the sec the middle one first and then the two on either side with the same distance and my distance of favor here is three sixteenths of an inch in between each and around the perimeter and that is actually one and a half cubes on the grid ruler that we carry here at Club Scrap, which I don't scrap without it. Then a nested border strip, two tilted vertical black mats, and you got a sparkly mat that should fit with the journaling prompt. On this side, we're going to do a horizontal black across the top. Oh, this guy fits right in here nicely. Then this is the same width as the black mat, so this kind of looks nice. And you can round up the bottom with two vertical pieces. And I think my borders here were a quarter of an inch, like from here, here, between, between, and across the bottom. It worked out like dreamy. Like if you like math, this, oh, it's going to make you so happy. Okay, now see this. I found out that the width of this this uh, cut apart matched the width of this uh, rectangle I'd created earlier, but it was a little too long. So I'll show you what I did with that in a moment. And then you can tuck this behind here once it's trimmed. Okay, so final details. Oh, I didn't. I put it above with a pop dot. Here I added some thin line dazzles. Same here. So instead of trimming this away, I kept it on and used two rows of the pretty thin lines and then finish with a charm. I'll pop that charm right over here. Mm -mm -mm. I just love this page. Okay, then on the other side, super simple. Once again, added the, this is more like a, looks more like a ball chain uh, shape. And then topped it with a simple bow made with a teal taffeta ribbon. I believe I still had some of this left over. Not not much. I, I managed to allocate almost all of the ribbon on um, all of the pages. I try to do that. Just use it all, right? Because who wants to store an eight inch scrap of ribbon? Um, and that way everything is ready to go, ready for your pictures once you, once you adhere everything with all your favorite tools like your 3x14 grid ruler, your favorite adhesive, and you're good to go. Wow, that was easy. That was fun. This, this this whole page just pretty much jumped out of the box and into these pages without any pain whatsoever. So I hope you find the same to be true for you. If you like this beautiful theme, please join me at the Geodes Card Kit Workshop. We're going to have a lot of fun making a dozen stunning cards. And I've got some unique and fresh tips to share with you there. So I hope to find you over there. See you soon.